Uh, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another podcast. I'm Laszlo. There's no title of the podcast yet. Probably just the Laszlo's podcast for now. I'm here with today's guest is uh, Stephen. Hello. Uh, we're driving home from a bar called The Grid. It's a barcade, meaning it's a bar with arcade games, you know, just 80s themed video games centered towards the nerds who drink. It's also a stage for open mic night. We went for open mic night to see some friends. We missed the friend show and then everyone else was bad, but that's okay. It was like one We might get hit by a car. There was one good lady that talked about her vagina making diamonds. Yeah, but that's like my least favorite part of her routine. Like, yes. She had some good jokes, and ever, after a while, I was like, I'm done with her. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty done with her. I mean, at least she was tolerable. Let's start the podcast with some wins. Steve, you got any wins? Anything anything you feel accomplished about? Or things that you are, are particularly into right now? What am I into right now? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I've been reading this comic book. Oh, you know, I just got into this show, and it's pretty good. You know what I mean? I mean... Uh, we watched uh, some Frasier and Cheers last night, so... Uh, that's true, that's, that's a new thing. I, I'm definitely getting really into Frasier because of uh, the shit posting group on oh, Facebook. Yeah. yeah, we... we... That's, guys, I'm really into Cheers right now. I don't know if you're... No spoilers, but it's not a bad show. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know if that's spoiling anything. It, it was around for 11 years. That's crazy to me. Then again, every, everybody loves Raymond had like nine seasons too. So, how many seasons technically is Cheers? Uh, I don't know, like ten. But like, well, not only that, but like, I was looking like season one has twenty two episodes, and it's like that's so many. They're really short though. I mean, like they're still like they're not like oh, long. they're like yeah, they're not like hour long episodes. It's, it's not like it's The West Wing or fucking Mad Men. Or yeah, or Mad, Mad Men, Men or Breaking like, Bad or those like, hour episode. Well, the thing with Mad Men is that like. You have to wait, like, a season for it to get good. But, like, with Cheers, like, the first episode's good. Honestly, yeah. Because from the, right from the beginning, because it does a thing that people have issues with, where, like, it introduces the characters really quick without, like, spending time. Whereas the character comes in and it's already established and everyone knows who the character is. And so yeah. you can get straight to it. Versus, like, who's this guy? Well, not only that, but, like, they literally, like, start off with, like, their gimmicks, too. Like just right off like, the bat, just they're already yeah. The from the first episode, when Norm walks in, they still yell the no, like like oh it's Norm, and like the fact that they like have established like character like traits from the very first episode is pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that is nice. I mean, Ted Danson, I honestly didn't really know about him until The Good Place, which is actually well, that's one of my wins for uh, The Good Place. It's oh. a show going on right now, season two, part two just came out again. Like, some episodes, like, you gotta wait for each episode each week now, I think. Yeah, because they, they had a winter break. They had a winter break, and now season two, part two, is back on, I believe, Hulu and NBC itself. And it comes out first on NBC, you wait a little while, and then it gets dropped on Hulu. Yeah, Netflix is still far behind. Anyway, that's where I first really saw Ted Danson, you know, considering I was born in 1991 and the show ended when I was, like, two, so wasn't watching Cheers growing up, just gonna say it. That's fair. Uh, so I didn't know who Ted Danson was until a good place, but as I was telling Steven last night, it's weird seeing young Ted Danson and so many, like, physical mannerisms, the way he talks, the way he carries himself, and the way he talks with his hands in Cheers remind me so much of his character in The Good Place. It's like exactly the same. It, like, throws me, I was like, this literally is I mean, it's Ted Danson. It's Ted Danson. Yeah. He apparently hasn't changed since, like, like the 80s. He's kept, like, the same shit for, like, 35 he, years. He's just a tall boy who makes us all feel good when he exists. Yeah. Even if he is, like, sad sometimes. His sadness is also part of our pleasure because he's funny. <laughs> because it's usually, like... I don't get off on Ted Danson's sadness. It, I meant, like, as in, like, it's entertaining when he's sad because his character is usually sh- sad for, like, comedic effect. That's true. He's never like sad for this like pure. Sadness. I don't know because I'm sh- I'm sure he's tried to do other serious stuff outside of something like the Good Place or the Cheers Place. <laughs> Called Cheers. We're driving south right now, by the way, everybody. We're driving south. We're going pretty south. 
Uh, let me check the scores today. Got some scores, got some notifications on my phone. Some scores of what? You ever worry when you're driving and there's someone that's like the exact same car as you and you're worried that you're either seeing yourself from a different future or you're like, uh-oh, in the same future. Was it a lady? Then it could be me from a different fu different universe, I mean. Let's check the scores on my phone. Got a notification for help others sure. by visiting Gilbert Pizza. Oh, oops. Isn't every, if, if a oh. multiple universe thing exists, neither of my every, notifications were scores, of course. Every single person, you in a different universe? Theoretically, yeah. There's also the theory that like, uh, reincarnation is you living through every single person in existence and then like when you're done living through every single person like then you are god but like how do you live through every single person that will ever live because when you die you're reborn as a different so like we're all the same consciousness and like reincarnation is like you die and you wake up but instead of being reincarnated into like a specific like line of people like you're technically bouncing around and like eventually your spirit will have been every single person like in existence you don't realize how stressful that is like that, that is like the most anxiety ridden but like, you don't know about it uh, i don't i don't like the idea of it i don't like reincarnation in the first place but that is like a theory that some people have i guess but like that sounds awful that literally sounds like the worst thing ever but then it's like well now like theoretically if that's like a real thing you have to like live every single life of like everybody that's like like been miserable and like every single person that's died in a war you have to live i'm already someone who's miserable but like <laughs> miserable like to like the extreme that i can't even imagine because I'm, yeah i have such a good life compared to other people yeah. like dying in like cocaine wars in colombia <laughs> oh, like you have to uh, live all of that but i guess well, in, that, in that respect you also like it's but the issue i guess is like you don't know I mean, you don't know, but I guess, yeah, in that one moment, you're like, wow, life is the worst because I'm having one of the worst lives ever. But then I guess you could also have, I guess that's the thing. If only you had the sentience to detach from it and like see it and you're like, well, at least I can appreciate uh, the good lives I've had too. But no, you, you no, just well, are no, a person. But then you would be able to sit in your shitty life and realize all the other good lives you could be living. And then you would have like the word, like especially like, if you live a shitty life for like Just seven years. Over with. I don't like this. We're like gonna run over a construction worker by accident or something in a minute. That's one of his bad lives. Like, I don't know. The way one of the construction workers was looking at me, I was like eighty percent sure for a second he was that I wasn't paying attention to traffic, and we like drove into somewhere where we're not supposed to. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm about to hit this guy. And he's like, oh, what the fuck? But no, we're where we're supposed to. It's just. That nighttime construction. Are any of us really where we're supposed to be? No, because there is no supposed to. Exactly. There just is or isn't. You're there. And that like sounds super philosophical. Philosophical. <laughs> philosophical. Wow, I'm so philosophical. It's bullshit. It's just honest. It's like, oh, fuck them. We're just here. <laughs> oh god. We're listening to the electronic album by George Harrison, by the way. Called Electronic Music. Electronic Music by George Harrison. Love George Harrison. The best speed. Just... Oh, Electronic Sound. Electronic Sound by George Harrison, the best Beatle. Like, by, by far. By far the best Beatle. <coughs> George. And then Paul. Mm -hmm. And then Ringo. And then Ringo and then John. John's on the bottom. What about skill-wise? Skill-wise? Not, uh, not paying into the attention of like their personality and like the kinds of people. Just George, fair. Paul, uh, John, Ringo. Yep. Yep. Because at least Paul played like two, three instruments. Hey, Paul's pretty good. He still makes some good music. From well, the main thing is he's still like really good live even though he's like 78 or something. Well, just because he's a good person. He's a you good just person. feel that. You he's know it. He's a good performer. He's a good guy. Uh, he's a nice dad. Like he's just 
I was going to say something, but I don't want to put the two against each other. I was going to say who's better, George Harrison or Brian Wilson, but they're completely different, and they, like, they would be content different. being, like, equals rather than, like, there's no competition They're there. really good. I will say, though, like, if Brian Wilson didn't get, like, yucked up by, like, <laughs> life. get fucked up by Paul Giamatti. Like, Paul Giamatti. Or no, no, but, like, no, his parents, too. Oh, yeah. Like, his dad was bad, and then also, like, his brothers were like, uh, stop being, like, interesting. Wow, why are you the best musician in the world? Stop it, we don't like it. We got a party, we want to surf. Uh, why aren't you in Tokyo? None of them right? surfed. Uh, I thought, well, well, they no, surfed. one of them did. One guy surfed. Dennis Wilson. Dennis Wilson. Dennis Wilson. He was also the guy that died the earliest, because he was, like, <laughs> drunk, and he was like, yeah, and then, like, all of a sudden, he's like, I'm, I'm gonna be good, and then, nope, he died. Oh, didn't he, like, fall in the water? He drowned, right? Did he? That's, I think, I'm pretty sure that's how he died. Was he was drunk, and he, like, fell off a boat while he was drunk, and then he was done for. I mean, that's how Jeff Buckley died. Jeff Buckley? <laughs> Buckley. Jeff Buckley? He's the guy who did the Hallelujah song. Maybe that's what I'm talking about. But at the same time, I feel like it's a thing that happens to a lot of people, so it legitimately could be two celebrities. It could be. It's... I, that is weird how many, like, famous, like, solo artists, like, just, like, fell into a river, drunk, and, like, bye. What are some other things that you've been into lately? Uh, let's see. Uh, what have I been listening to? Uh, I don't I've been listening to a little bit of No Name, the rapper from Chicago. Oh, yeah, she's not bad. It's not bad. I've been listening to her when you're in my car. Like today, literally. But I, I'm pretty sure you've played some of her stuff before. I probably she have. Sounds familiar now. She's really good. Yeah. She needs to put out some new material. Please shout out to No Name, please. Hey No Name, if you're listening to our podcast, hey you go. <laughs> go. If No Name, you listen to the podcast, go. No, not no. Sorry, No Name. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to. A, I was at a four-way stop, and I didn't want to actually go yet. And so I was we apologize, to someone. No name. Sorry, no. Who chooses a name like that? No name. I mean, it's it's memorable. I have not forgotten it since the first time I heard it. Uh, maybe it's a statement. I guess. I miss living in these apartments right here. And by living in, I mean dog sitting in a person. But like, you know what I mean. You I, live, I lived, you lived there. there. Yeah. Hey, I Finn's a good dog. Apartment. Finn is a dog. It's a good apartment complex. I wish. I could live there by myself. Don't want to pay the rent there. It's like eleven hundred a month at least. I don't for like, like that. For like, because I looked it up. Like, how how much like living in the apartment flat that like Finn was the owner, like that place that we lived in. Yeah. That starts at about eleven hundred to like fourteen hundred a month. I don't like that. And that probably doesn't sound too bad to some listeners. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna tell you right now. My last job where I was making more money by a little bit and working more hours, I only made like 1400 a month. And so, that's true. My entire like monthly paycheck would be, yeah. Now I'm still making, I'm making less because I only make 10 an hour now instead of 1030 an hour, which was my bonus I got after being at Sante for a year. But, even though I'm getting paid the same as at Sante, I work way less hours. So I was working 30 to 40 hours, even though I was supposed to be just part-time at Sante. This place, I'm working like between 12 and 18 hours. Every now and then, I like work all the way up to 33 hours. But for the most part at the zoo, I, I'm usually working less than 20 hours a week. Like this, like right now, I work Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, right? I don't work again until Sunday. And then next week, I work Sunday, Monday, and then the next Sunday is my... I have fucking Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. How many people work at the zoo? Right now, I'm assuming we got, like, maybe 30 employees, but that's after we cut off a bunch of people. Oh, so you stayed? I got kept on. I one of the ones that got kept on, the, 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 because I'm in a seasonal job, and the winter season for employees is they hire a lot of people in October in September and they work through the zoo light season which is November like the end of November through December and then like the first two weeks of January so January 15th was the last day for 
if you were only on for the winter season and you weren't chosen by the managers to stay until the spring. And now for spring, my season ends in March unless I get kept on in this into the summer because they make a lot of, like they cut from what I've heard and what I can see is they hire a bunch of people in the winter so they can have plenty of staff for a fucking zoo lights hype because they have all those night shifts and day shifts and now zoo lights is over so they don't really need any, as much people in the spring and then March Madness happens why is that a, what? March Madness this not March? related to basketball I was gonna say is well first spring starting next month spring training happens where literally half of the Major League Baseball plays only in Arizona. There are 15 teams that play spring training. I thought it was just the Cubs. It's 50, It's the Angels, the A's, the Dodgers, the Cubs, the Diamondbacks. Oh, yeah. The Kansas City Royals, the Rockies, the Indians, the Titans? No, Texans. And then a couple more. It's literally 15. An exact half of the 30 teams that we have in the MLB play in Arizona during spring training now. Because Arizona has such a perfect spring climate. And so it's called the Cactus League. And it's just all of the spring training season. So that's like our big tourist season. We got a shitload of people during spring. And then with that, also because spring is like the best season of Arizona, the Phoenix Zoo goes fucking insane too. Because we're open... 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. now. We we close an hour later than normal. And with this, when it's going to get a little bit warmer than it is now. Honestly, right now, because we're like, we never really had a full winter yet. We're just going straight into spring now, because it's like 70s. Yeah, well, during the day. Oh, yeah, it's cold at night. Yeah. Yeah. My mom thinks it's funny, but I keep saying, like I said, I'm done with winter. I'm like honestly tired of the cold already. I'm You're, tired of being cold. I want are, it to be warm. You have no cold tolerance. At all. I'm I'm totally fine with it being 70s during the daytime when the sun's out. But when the sun goes down, I want it to stay in the 70s. The only time I don't like it when it's cold is whenever I wake up. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, oh no, I just want to be cho- cozy. I just want to be snoozing. And no. especially because like I'm like really bad at like, because I go to. Community college is like 15 minutes away, and so I'm really bad about sleeping in. So I'm I like, I'm gonna I'm be there in 15 minutes. And so, like, by the time I wake up and have to get ready, like, I just have to leave. And so, I never, oh, I don't get used, I don't like get used to waking up. And so, I just like get out right like five minutes after I've already been snoozing. And that's, so, that's why I have my handy dandy alarm system I use that everyone fucking makes fun of me for. What? Okay. Certain friends have said that this doesn't make sense. But what I'm doing, like, let's say I got, I want to get up, I want to be up at 9 a.m. to, like, do whatever my plans for the day, right? Like, I need to actually get out of bed at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. I'll set my alarm for 7 a.m. entirely, in, or intentionally for, to wake up at 7 from the alarm, set my alarm to 8, go back to bed, snooze a little bit. Get up at 8, set my alarm to 9, go back to bed, snooze another hour. Get up at 9, now I actually get out of bed and start my day. I always set my I have, alarm two or three hours early. I have early. the early alarms too. The main thing is that like, I'm really good about just like, I hear it, I just go, bye. And oh no. I just never wake my up. My alarm is across the bedroom. So I have to get out of bed, get onto the floor, hold the button to like, well I have to turn it off and I have to hold a button to switch the hours. It's like uh, I, have this not, whole, no. I have this whole process where I'll wake up get out of bed really quick, go change the time, go back to bed, and then do that twice. And then the third alarm, so I've gotten up, slept an hour, gotten up, slept an hour, and then I get up and start my day. Because I know that if I set it for 9 a.m. when I wanted to be up, that I would be up at 11 a.m. Because I know, so it gives me like, so I set my alarms too early so I can give myself that time. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go back to bed a little bit more. Just because I know myself, and so even though other people think it's dumb, by setting my alarms too early, what? it gives me that grace period so to be like, people, I'm snoozing. Can other people just wake up at like a time? Yeah, they'll set their alarm like, oh, I need to get up at 9, and then I sit them to get up. 
but it's like, I, I know I can't These do are that. people that are like, too capable. Or dummies. Yeah. So they don't. And not that they're like, they're like that capable, but they like, I don't know. I can't see a world where, like, the first... Because in their mind, like, those two hours, then they got more sleep, and then they're able to get up. But it's like, no. It's not about how much sleep I get. It's just that the best sleep I could ever get is that, like, going back to bed sleep. Well, it's, it's the same thing as, like, like if you have a day off, and you get woken up a little bit too early, and you're like... <gasps> and then you're like, oh, wait, I have a day off, and uh, I can go back to bed. And so you just sneeze. And it's like... You sneeze? I, sure. Like you, you also snooze. But, that being said, like, it's the best thing is waking up and realize you can sleep more. But, like, if you induce that through, uh, like, your own alarm system, then you just get that every day. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, oh, I can go back to bed another hour. Oh, I'm going to go back to bed another hour. And then it's 9 a.m. and it's like, okay, I better start getting ready. Uh, I will say, like, tomorrow. But... I have school at 10.30 in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally, I like to leave by 8.30, get to school at 9. By the time I walk to class, it's like 9.15, 9.20. And then I have an hour to like sit around at school before class. You do that? To make sure that I'm not late. Because if I'm running late for a class, I'll ditch it. I will not walk into a class late in college. That's too scary for me. I'll just not go to school. Because I have to either be too early right on time or I'm not going I don't know to be fair the but last then I always three get really semesters, bored when I get there the <laughs> last three semesters I've had like nothing but theater classes and that's like no one cares like if, if they know you and you come in late they're just like okay. oh I know but just it's me in my mind and so I'm like uh, 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 I can't do it people are going to look at me and then I might as well die I might as well kill myself right there in front of class I just commit poo right there <laughs> Um, it's honorable death. So let's see. So I want to be awake enough that I have. Also, I give myself like a full hour to like get ready, which other people think is silly, but like it takes me an hour sometimes to get ready just because I spend a lot of time sitting places and forgetting that I'm like getting ready. Oh, same. And so I'll set my alarm probably for 6 a.m. Sometimes I don't do two, I just do one. So I'll set my alarm for six. Maybe five, let, let, let's say if I'm worried that I'm gonna be too snoozy, I'm gonna set my alarm for five a.m. I'm gonna wake up at five a.m. Set my alarm for six a.m. Go to snooze. Wake up at six a.m. Set my alarm for seven a.m. Go to snooze. Wake up at seven. Uh, get dressed. Eat some food. Leave the house by eight or eight thirty. Usually eight thirty. I usually get distracted. And then get to school around nine. It takes me about 15, 20 minutes to walk from where I park into the part of campus where I am. Then 20 minute walk to your class? If I'm not hustling, yeah. That sounds, I don't know if I'm gonna like ASU too much. ASU is a big campus and uh, I'll tell you right now, I don't park on campus. Well, I do park on campus, but I'm not parked like, I'm not parked on University Road, I'm telling you that. Mm. I park behind the basketball stadium. So I cross two roads to get into campus. Not two major roads. I cross like a little road and then I cross university and then I'm on campus. I will say, even though I tell myself it's like 15, 20 minutes, it, it, it's more like 10 to 12 minutes of me like. I mean, yeah. I'm hustling, I'm walking, I'm zooming. It's too big. I do a lot of walking through school. I mean, like, I, I wouldn't doubt it, to be fair, because it is a fucking huge campus. The main thing is just, like, are any of the dorms, like, on, on campus? Oh, yeah. Like, like, There's a couple dorms, like, in the campus. Like, I'm pretty sure... Those sound like they're expensive. Oh, I'm... I bet, dude. Wait, I know, I'm sure I couldn't afford to stay on, on campus. Well, that's the whole thing, is, like, I don't get, like, especially people that, like, were born here, like, why do you move on campus? Like, like there's, there's, well, fuck the experience. All it is is just from a bunch what of I've dudes. heard, though. If you're not transferring like I did, if you straight up go out of high school into ASU as a freshman, you have to start 
freshman year on campus. I it's like that's, a requirement. I know that's a thing for like NAU. I don't know it's if it's NAU, ASU. Is it ASU? That's what I've heard. But I went to community college for five years and got fucked up and then transferred to ASU. So now I'm only going to be there for four, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably going to be there for five foot to five years. That it's, means it's going to have taken me seven and a half, almost eight years to get my bachelor's degree. Well, my associates and bachelors, but still. The film school is supposed to be a two-year program. It took me five years. I thought I thought film school was way longer. No, so what I got in because it's an associate's degree. Associates in film, so it's a two-year degree. But uh, yeah, it took me five years to do it. Well, you didn't. That's right. It would have taken me six years if I dropped it and just got an associate's in the arts, so I could be done with it already. So I finished college in five years. I mean, yeah, technically I have an associate's in the arts, but I do have like five years of experience doing five film school. It's just that last semester I was like, and then you just how do I finish YouTube videos? Oh, did I tell you already? I think I told you the other day that I got an email from YouTube that I'm not a creator anymore. What? That means my videos can't be monetized. What did you do? Uh, they have a new rule where they like, have more limitations, like more requirements for like how many views you need and how many subscribers you need. Is this because of Logan Paul? I don't know. I think it's just so that they don't... Have to spend more money? Yeah, they don't want to pay people unless they're like really getting it, you know what I mean? That's fucking dumb. I mean, I get it. I don't because of the fact that like... Well, I, it, it made more sense for me because like if you're getting paid for the views, then it's like most people you don't have to pay because they're not getting any fucking views. Well, but now, like, to like, be deemed a creator, you have to be making, like, like I, you have to make, like, I can't remember the email completely, but I think it's something like, you have to be making, like, you have to have at least a thousand subscribers, which I only have, like, 200 somehow still, maybe 300. I have more, like, Instagram followers than I have YouTube subscribers, and it pisses me the fuck off. But, um, and you have to be making, like, almost, like, 4,000 views, like, a week. Uh... And, like, I feel like unless, like, you're one of those big boys, that's hard to maintain. Like, 4,000 views to wait to week to, like, stay creator level. Those are the people that do it, like, full time. But, like, my thing is, like, I was not making money off of my view, my videos anyway. So, it literally doesn't do anything for me. Mm. Other than the fact that I just monetized every video I have. Because I'm like, hey, why not? You never know. This one might hit the big one, maybe. Like, I'm pretty sure if I even find out how to cash in on, like, all my views from 2010 to now... I'd probably, like, make, like, I don't know, maybe, like, two bucks. Maybe five dollars, maybe ten. Eric, two years ago, cashed in a hundred dollars from his YouTube show. And that's back when he had, like, 3,000 subscribers. What the fuck? He didn't have 3,000 subscribers two years ago. He had 3,000 subscribers, like, four or five years ago. But he said two years ago he, like, checked or, like, cashed in, like, his money from all his, like, monetized videos. And he only made, like, a hundred bucks. Like, unless you're getting, like, slam dunking those views, uh, like, you don't make shit. Some people make bank. Like, you can make an easy, easy like, six-figure salary. Well, yeah, like, fucking PewDiePie once, and shit. Once you get in the spotlight. But, just like the real film industry, like, only some people are gonna get it. And there's gonna be a lot of yeah. yahoos that are trying. So, it's like every entertainment industry. And then there's bitter people than me that, like, just gave up trying, and it's like, I just make shit, because why not? Well, it's like the same thing where, like, I'm not, trying to be. I'm not gonna, like, be, like, the guy that goes to, like, New York and, like, waits five years to get, like, one opportunity to do something they want to do. Like, yeah. it's, like, I legitimately don't care about anything enough to, like, wait five years to do it. And it's, like, maybe those, like, reasons are, like, why we'll never make it because we don't have the ambition. But it's, like, it, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm well aware that it, I don't It doesn't have matter ambition. to me anymore. Yeah. See, I, I do everything out of either spite or fear. <laughs> like, I, I don't do things for, like, the sake of, like, me loving it. Just because, like, I don't like anything enough to, like, do it for free. Spite is a very, very, very good motivator. It's also a good motivator for me to make art. To, like, spite other people. I used to just do it to spite myself. I don't do it to spite myself, I do it to spite others. Well, because, like, it's, it ties in with the fear, because it's just like, oh, shit, I don't think I can do this. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> and, I, and I do it. But, like, uh, it's it depends, really. 
Like, no, my thing is sometimes, like, to piss other people off, I'm like, well, I'm gonna do this now. Certain times, yeah, but then, like, it also goes into, like, certain areas where it's, like, you can't really control what certain shit happens. Like, uh, mainly, or, I like... Guess, I guess pettiness, I'm saying. Pettiness is a very good motivator. Oh, no, I'm, I'm really petty. I'm really petty. Good fella. Disciple tattoo. Good fella. Like, it's it's not all of them, it's just your passion. Just one, one good fella. What is that? Is that a record label? Is that a clothing line? Is that a tattoo place? Good fella. What is it? What is it? I can't read Something that. Something mentality. Oh fuck! If that's like a fucking um, like gym. Oh. Um, then we have the savages, and it's a fucking ninja turtle. I don't really consider Yo, Ninja Turtle Yo, we beat Turtles that entire sad. Ninja Turtle game today at the arcade. And it was the most boring win It's I've because ever it was like a, an arcade that you essentially had unlimited coins because the system's like... A lot of the, all arcades in there, except for a couple, are like actual free-to-play. And so you can press a button and the computer thinks you put the coins in. And essentially, essentially, we had infinite lives. And so we just hit the hit button until the game was over. Basically. Because we just kept dying and kept coming up. Like, Which, I, s- I still don't Except bel- somehow I managed to lose lives on Leonardo, and I had to only play... I, I to never like had to game. redo... Like, Raphael, I literally, like, log in, like, on him by accident, and I never played him, and he never died. Oh, I didn't log... You didn't log him in by accident. I logged him in. I was like, bring another guy on here. So I just had all four players out at once. And so I had to, like, randomly control him every single time we had to move on. <laughs> and he was, like, straggling in the back, and I'm like, God damn it! I just want to fucking play this game and get done with it. Oh my god, that thing was like... I will say, Turtles of Time, much better than... Oh, for sure, that shit was awful. That was just like 25 minutes of math, like button mashing. Honestly, Turtles of Time, though, if you had unlimited lives, it's the same goddamn thing. Just button mash until you're done. I mean, yeah, but like, at least you feel like you're doing something. Like, with this one, like, I, I had no idea whether or not I was actually winning or not until we won. That's so fair. I legitimately couldn't tell, either. And some of the levels were frustrating. Like, even though we were, like, winning the whole time, it was just, it took forever. Yeah, well, there was, like, the, the guys who, like, you couldn't avoid any of their attacks, but you had to get close enough to hit them, and so if you're close enough to hit them, you're close enough to get hit. And so... Oh, hell, sir. And it's, like, I don't give a shit enough to, like, anticipate the movements and, like, memorize shit, because, like, it's free and, like, I don't die. And so you just kind of, like, wait to win at that point. Which I want to rewatch the pow- the the... Ninja Turtle movies. Like, the good ones? I'll watch all of them, dude. Are there... They're both... The first two when are I the good, good ones. I say good ones, I mean the first three. I don't... I don't I, I, what I mean... Are there more than three? You know... The I've only seen thing. the first two. Well, no. You know, like, not... Oh, you mean the new, new ones? Yeah. Yeah, no. I, no, I forgot those. those existed. Those don't count ones. I do... I, I try to forget. Just because they don't need to exist. No, I meant, like, the old, old ones. With the one where they feed the monster the, like like donut holes or whatever and they look so what? fucking good what? they feed like a powdered treat to a monster in either the first or the second movie in like one scene and as a kid whatever that like powdered snackaroo was looked so good and like it has such a nostalgia now it's like it's like the ideal treat that I've never found uh my, my that's me with um the episode of Jimmy Neutron where they had the candies that everyone was, like, freaking out about. Remember, Jimmy made candy so good. I like, remember it. It was like, oh, shit. Like, like, dude, Breaking Bad stole from that Jimmy Neutron episode. What? It was a chemist who made the best candy. Everybody was freaking out. It was so good. Meth is not candy. To a meth person, I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... But you see the announcement. Do you, do you say a meth Jimmy person? Ninja. Just a man of meth? <laughs> a meth meth man? Method man? Yo, I lead, a, I lead a life of meth. I'm a man of meth. <laughs> man of God, man of meth. It's man. the same amount of devotion. Uh, so you know what a chaplain is, right? And I'm not talking... The chaplain? Like Charlie Chaplin? No! C-H-A-P-L-A-I-N. Chaplain. Lucha Lucha? Yeah, it's a new taco place. Like, literally just named after the TV show. Maybe or maybe not. What if it's just a Mucha Lucha themed taco shop? And so oh, you go in and it has, boy. like, the characters. Like, the fucking, oh, like, the no. fleet. And the fucking, 
Everyone else? You want to see something spooky? I don't know. This fire in the horizon. See all that smoke? Where? What? Okay, if you look to the north. It's not a fire. Is... That's the factory. I know, but pretend you didn't know that. That is spooky. But even I... then, the factory just has a spooky vibe. I don't even know what the oh. fuck they make. Well, that's, oh, so that's a nice house. Also, like, I love because, like, this is a, a nice part of Gilbert that we're driving in right now. These are, like, really nice houses. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I like that it's all the nice houses are around the factory. Like, a giant factory that's kind of hidden by trees. So all you see are some pipes and a lot of smoke all day. And then, like, some really nice houses. Dude, this factory reminds me of, like, fucking Stranger Things. Oh, no. The Demogorgon's gonna jump out on Gilbert. Oh, my God. The Demo Dogs. It's like right by the animal hospital, too, where my dogs died. <laughs> They're gonna demogorganize my doggos. If we see a fucking, like, demogorganized Sarge, oh, I don't, don't oh. want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that big ass boy. What if they did a pet cemetery? And so it wasn't, like, demonized, it was just, like, the pet itself, like, grew back and now it's evil boy? Sarge would kill us. Sarge would kill us. No, because Sarge is too good, so he'd overcome his own zombification. And just turn back into a good and dog. Like, and you would be like, like I cannot. And he'd just be a good boy. And then you fight so all the zombies. It would be like dogs. a secret weapon to like, like defeating all the zombies. The secret weapon is that my dog obviously is too wholesome. I mean, too wholesome. No one will disagree that Sarge is such a good dog. Rest in peace. That even if he got turned into an evil zombie, he'd be like, I cannot do this. And then he would turn into a good boy. I Jess, Jess is not here. Just, no. Jess would be evil. Or she'd be she'd be the one that surprises us. Sarge wouldn't be able to overcome it because he's old and also he was Actually, not the smartest. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if Jess just kind of like didn't do anything. Jess was like, she snapped out of it, but she didn't like choose to fight the zombies. She choose to just go like take a nap. Like she just leaves and this is she like this glowing dog just like walking on the street. Just like, okay. Just like Benicio Del Toro's line in uh, Star Wars. Here's one spoiler. Live free, don't join. Oh, shit. Like, just fucking don't choose sides. Just I fucking really chill. don't like The Last Jedi, but like... I liked elements of The Last Jedi. I liked things that implied, but the things that implied should have actually just been done, like, full force. Well, the main thing is, like, they were really, like... Like, they oh. played with a lot of, like, symbols, and they tried to make it, like, really, like... Ooh, this represents this, and this is, this is, this is, this thing. And it's like, what just, food? like, yeah. Like, that's the thing, is like, they just try to put in a bunch of, like, like weird, like, neo-political undertones and all that kind of shit. And, like, just made it seem like they're, like, artsy and, like, like, smart and more clever. But in reality, they just made, like, a good, like, hour of the movie, like, unwatchable. The first half of the film is not good. The last third of the film is pretty good. Well, here's the thing. There's a, a sliver of the last third of the movie. And if you watch the movie, you know what scene it starts at. They're like, oh, this is a good movie now. This is a real movie. And then it kind of wanes because it just takes for fucking ever to end. And then, what? like, there were three times that, like, that movie could have ended. And then the story kept going on. And I was like, okay, I guess. Because well, there's a bunch of times where they just, like, had weird plot twists. And they were like, uh, uh-oh, it looks like this isn't what it's supposed to be. And it's like, I don't, I just I, met this character. Like, why do I, I don't care that, like, there's, like, this, like, weird plot twist with everything. Like, I, but there's no continuity with anything. Okay, so we're gonna now do a spoilers uh, version. So if you haven't seen The Last Jedi, stop listening to the podcast now or keep skipping and hope you don't hear good like keep, keep skipping until you find where we're not talking about star wars and hope you don't hear any juicy details juicy but now here's our spoiler full not spoiler free review of uh star wars last jedi starting at 38 minutes and 54 seconds into the podcast okay so why did they introduce a character like admiral holdo just to kill her and they kept leia when Laura Dern is alive, Carrie Fisher is not. They should have killed Leia. Probably. Because well, see, she's, she's dead. They had already filmed parts of it. I guess. If not all of it. But like, give her character a nice ending and flesh out Admiral Holdo. And then she could have been a real character in the next well, movie. See, the main thing with Admiral Holdo. Character that, 
Oh. The main thing with Holdo is the fact that, like, I don't like her enough to, like, enjoy whenever she, like, turns good. Basically. Or, like, the, the reveal that, like, she, like, oh, she was good all along. She was just hard on the boy. She knew what she was doing. And, like, I, like, I get that, but at the same time, like, if you're going to introduce a character and make it somebody that I have to, like, they, like, redeem themselves for me and make me, like, really well, yeah. happy. One, write her better. Yeah. Two, let Leia die. Because now, like, what's going to happen? Are they just well, going to CGI a fucking Carrie Fisher for the entire episode nine? Probably. Or is she going to die in the first scene? And it's like, why did you bring her all the way to the third movie? Just because? I don't know. Or I, the ninth I want to say movie. that, like, this movie, they just got really lazy at correcting mistakes. And they just, like, made a movie all that over. they, like, planned from the beginning. Like, I feel like they just, like, never did any rewrites. This movie felt like it had, like, more than one writer. Like, there was, like... They, like, took pieces of different people's ideas in the movie and put it together. Because yeah. it was, like, all over the place. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like it was made in, like, like a, like a, like a intro level film school class. Like a film <laughs> writing class. Or, like, because I, I know when I did the design class, like, everything about, like, that design was, like, completely different. Like, every single part of, like, the design was, like, they were their own separate things. So I feel like they were, like, a bunch of writers that had, like, oh, that's a good idea, let's put it in the movie. And they just, like, never made it cohesive. Like, I really like where Luke Skywalker was going in the direction of, like, oh, the Jedi Order needs to end, the Jedi were never good, and it's, like, fucking pompous and, van like, vanity to, like, assume that, like, the Force would go away if the Jedi die. Mm -hmm. Because the Force exists with or without the Jedi. Mm -hmm. And, like, he fucking says, like, when the Jedi were at the height of their power was when fucking Darth Vader was born. Mm -hmm. And so, I wish they explored that more instead of getting caught up in, like, the weird... I just wish... I wish there was more... more to that plotline and, like, more mysticism and more of Luke actually, like, trying to, like, train Rey into, like, almost, like... Like, they could become... Uh, Shadow Jedi, or I think Grey Jedi is what it's called, where you're not a Sith, you're not a Jedi, you practice both sides of the Force for, like, the Force itself. And uh, I, I will say that having taken a Taoism class, Jediism, like, really gets to me even more now. Like, th like before, I was like, yeah, okay, I see it. But now it's like, Jediism is straight up Taoism with, like, lightsabers. It's like reinterpreted. It's like a reinterpreted form of Taoism, and like there's literally a yin yang in the fucking movie. Is Yoda Yang Chi? No, it's not like that. They're like actual, like characters from the like Taoist religion, like or like icons. Like there's no Lao Tzu. There's no like white souls. But I'm saying like the philosophy behind Taoism, like Jedi's took like the study of the Tao, and then like went from there. But, like, the Tao is there, and, like, the balance of the yin and the yang, the, like, eternal, like, changing into itself, and the cycle and the balance is, I mean, that, is the, that, is the Jedi Council, like, the fucking, like, the Holy Council or whatever? Well, like, see, yeah, because, like, there's a bureaucracy of the gods, well, that's the thing, it's, like, it's not, like, so deep that it has, like, the bureaucracy of the gods, and it isn't, like, there's, like, white souls and, like, uh, the seven... I think it's, you have, like, seven white souls, and then you have a certain amount of, like, something else spirits. I don't know, just... There's a lot to Taoism. Anakin Skywalker drank that Cinnabar elixir to become a Jedi. Oh, <laughs> But, no, just, like, the Tao itself. Like, that part. Like, like the Tao and your Numas and Chi. That's part of da Jediism. They don't have, like... Oh, you gotta write a proposal to go give to the secretary of the god, and then he'll be like, "Yeah, I've heard it." It's not that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure there's no god in Jediism. It straight up is just the force. The force is now. like a god-ish in its own right. Yeah, but it's not a sentient entity. Well, yeah, no, it's not. It's the Tao is just that spiritual essence between all things. I don't know. I, I, did, I didn't take the class. I don't. I'm not. I, I love Taoism. <laughs> like, I like to make a lot of, like, Taoist jokes and, like, Taoist memes. This 
door that said Mitch's Beats. Mitch's Beats. Beats. Beats? Yeah, not like Beats. Beats. Like on necklaces. Fleslet on the bead. Oh no, is that what, like, what Fleslet did in summer camp? <laughs> Fleslet on the bead. And then just like made those bracelets. He's like, yo. Those um, bracelets are Fleslet. But did you did you see in the movie, though, that there literally is like a fucking yin yang? No. Okay, so the fountain that, like, Luke is sitting on when he's talking to Rey about how the Jedi Order failed, I looked at it a couple times now that I've seen it four times in theaters just by circumstance. Uh, Wait, you watched that fucking movie four times? I've seen Star Wars four times now. <laughs> this is so bad, though. I liked it more each time. Well, actually, no, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it more the second time than I liked it the first time. I liked it more the third time. The fourth time, I didn't like it as much, but I think it's because now I'm, like, tired of it. Mm-hmm. Like, three was a good amount. Like, okay, okay, I've seen the movie. I like the characters. I'm done. And, like, it was in, like, a good and, and like, a... But the fourth time I saw it, I, I, I was kind of tired. I was, like, already tired to begin with. And so when I saw it with my friend, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll still see it with you. And then I was like, oh, uh, can we just skip to the fucking Kylo and Rey fighting Snoke scene? That scene hypes me up. I, lo- I honestly love this. It is a good scene until you realize that, like, it's all for nothing. No, it's not, though. It's not. Well, now we're just going to have, like, a really angry boy in the next movie. Well, I think Kylo Ren, unless the story cops out and he does turn in the end, could now legitimately be, like, a really good spooky villain. Like, a real bad boy. I still think he's going to be really angsty and, like, annoying. Oh, I hope not. I like, can see that. I don't have faith in the writers to make him, like, actually scary. Well, the thing is, like, by the third viewing, for some reason, I like Kylo Ren now. What? Not like he's my favorite, but, like, I like the path he's going in, and I was like, I like this character as a villain. I like the... I like what's implied for him now. Like, I enjoyed his character a lot more this time, like, the third and fourth time than, like, the first time. I will say, I'm not gonna watch the movie three more times to, like, get it. No, you know. <laughs> Obviously, Ray's great. I like Rose. I Ray's wish... good, but she kind of annoys me. She's because of the whole thing. Like, you need to come back. You need to restore the Jedi. You need to do this, and it's like I. She seems like like really annoyingly like like brainwashed. Oh yeah, totally. You know, but that's why I was hoping that they explored that more with Luke being like, "Look, the world fucking sucks, and the Jedi suck. Here's why." <laughs> That is like a like a thing that kind of annoyed me about Luke is that he never really like talked about like his intentions. That like they like watered down Luke like like if you're gonna make Luke like hate the Jedi somehow and like be sad boy like go fucking all the way mm-hmm. like I wanted him to like really delve into like what his problems with the Jedi Order are what his like ideas for like studying the mm-hmm. Force. Regardless of the politics. The whole thing is with the writing. But instead, he's like, don't talk to me. Okay, I'm a ghost. I'm dead. The writing was, like, almost nothing was in depth. Like, they have, like, these fucking books that, like, talk about, like, the engineering of, like, ships and shit like that. And they're so deep and, like, weird-ass fucking, like, lore for that. But they don't actually just, like, have cohesive storylines. Well, there's so much lore, and then, like, not much of it goes into these movies somehow. I don't know. Which is what you said, but yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is I don't know if it's like they just try to cater too much to like being a blockbuster movie. Well, here's the issue. Is that like even though this movie made plenty of money, so it's doing fine. Mm-hmm. Like Chinese theaters, which are a big market that blockbusters need to consider now, it's not playing in China anymore. Well, it, it went pretty quick. Well, because like this movie like hinges... Just like the Force Awakens hinges so much on nostalgia for the old movies mm-hmm. that a lot of the Chinese audience, from what I've heard, they're like, oh, you don't know what's going Like, they don't understand what's going on. Like, because, like, it hinges so much on you, like, already knowing shit. Like, oh, yeah, because of the old movies, I get, what's, well, I get what they're talking about. Uh... Like, so much, like, hinges on that nostalgia of, like, you already understanding the universe that, like, a lot of audiences that are, like, new to Star Wars are like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And, like, that's a bad way... Like, if you're going to make the, these new movies, like, make it in a way that even if you've never seen the old Star Wars, 
as blasphemous as it sounds to some people, it could stand on its own. Like Rogue One. I could say mm -hmm. Rogue One, if you've seen the other Star Wars movies, it's enhanced by that because mm -hmm. you can appreciate it more. But if you've never fucking seen a Star Wars movie anymore, like before, mm -hmm. and you see Rogue One, you understand everything. Everything's mm -hmm. there. It's a great standalone movie. If you've seen Star Wars before, like you've seen like First Hope, then those scenes that like cater hope. to it. It's the last hope. Not the first hope. <laughs> That's the opposite of what the movie is. Like, no. Like, help me, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my first hope. <laughs> hey, you're the first one I'm hoping for. <laughs> hey, you're my first choice, but if not you, I don't know. I'll go to... I don't know what... Uh, Zingbar Rigby. That's a character probably. Zingbar Rigby? Yarl Poof. Whatever happened to him? Looks like he poofed out of the dang movie. What was the, what was the weird green boy? What, Yoda? He's a weird green boy. No! <laughs> like the one with the weird green dreadlocks. Oh, Kit Fisto. He's a fucking. Yeah, uh, I'll pray to Kit Fisto. I love Kit Fisto. I used to know his fucking species name. God damn. Uh, Cyclochlorine? I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like my fucking medicine, Cyclosporin. <laughs> Cyclosporin. Yeah, he's a Cyclosporian. Uh, <laughs> also known as Sandimunian. Cyclosporian. Yo, I can fucking make a stupid fucking sci fi just. Yeah, we're the Cyclosporians from the planet Sandimune. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my fucking medicine and it's like brand name. That's fucking awful. Yo! We're the fucking rap immune order from the planet Sierra Lemus. Sierra Lemus? Priest Down Park. It's me, Prevostat. <laughs> what up, it's your boy Citrulline. Uh oh. <laughs> it's me, Cardia XL from the planet Diltiasm. <laughs> what up, it's your boy Cardia XL, big boy. Cardia, the whatever fucking Roman numeral XL would be. That's forty. Forty? Yeah. L is fifty. X before that means ten less. Also, I just I watched Super Bowls as a kid, so. Uh, yeah. That was the one thing Yo, that I was. Yo, it's me, fucking Cardia, the fortieth. From the planet Deltaism. The 40th? Like, like, like the entire family's like, yeah. <laughs> like, every single time they have a kid. Yeah, that's Cardi. Yeah, this character, actually, I wrote him uh, in a semi-satirical note as a play on the, like, limited species of Star Wars. And that, like, uh, how everyone's the same. Like, everyone has the exact same culture. Yeah, that's the thing. In these new movies... Everyone is a human. I was thinking about that for the second and third time I was watching this Last Jedi, especially the fucking. Uh, even though there are a lot of like aliens in the background, but it really like brought to my attention the fucking like Kanto bite, like the casino scenes mm -hmm. of like there are way more humans now and way less aliens. There's no main character that's an alien other than like the fucking Yoda cameo. Like Yoda cameo. I mean, there were less. It. There were not a lot of alien main characters in the original trilogy, but I mean, well, that's not true because you have Yoda, you have Jabba the Hutt. Well, they have that's about that. it. Um, well, also at the same time, that was like in the seventies, and like they were limited. They were limited, but like, but in but the prequels, there, was, there, there were enough, like a bunch of fuckers. There were enough aliens in the original trilogy that you really felt it, even though all the main characters were humans, except mm -hmm. for like a couple as the story went on. Prequels, you got a lot of aliens going on. Uh huh. Like, well, the, the to point, the max. The, and the, now it feels like limited. Like, there's only humans in The Last Jedi. I just. I mean, you got Yoda, you have Poe Dameron, second in command, fucking Yamcha. <laughs> I don't know, but... Yeah, fucking Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z. I don't the know. The human from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> By the way. It's fucking... I don't know. I can't remember the alien's name. It's in the book. I don't know, and I he's don't... He's the long-faced alien? I... But I know in one scene, he says something that sounds like, Yamcha. And I'm like, yeah, his name's Yamcha. Because no. he goes, Yamcha. He's not a Pokemon. Oh. The fourth time, I actually caught that he was trying to tell Poe Dameron not to fucking, like... Make a scene because you hear him go, Poe. And I was like, Yo, this alien actually talks? Other than, 
your home truck. I get Apple. I hope. Marble. I think also another thing is like it, the aliens are definitely downplayed. Oh fuck yeah! That's also why is everybody mean to see three Beal? I never get that. Like they're all just like really sad. In the original trilogy, I get it. In the prequels, I don't get it. And this one, I don't get it because like you know, like why would Leia be like mean to see Drew Poe Dameron, I get. Because he's just a sassy boy. Yeah, and I can get, like, some of the lines of Leia, but it's, like, nobody gave C-3PO the time of day, which is usually how Also, like, he's just randomly there, too. Like, he doesn't do anything. He's there for... The soldiers. The, yeah, the effect of, like, C-3PO's here. Well, like, C-3PO has, has like, like, less screen time than the fucking porgs. God, the porgs. I fucking hate those porgs. Like, I feel bad for C-3PO because, like, his character's, like, been through it all, dude. Like... Like, writing in, like, the prequels, like, as canon, so that C-3PO's been here from the fucking beginning, mm-hmm. and R2-D2, those are some, like, sad robots. <laughs> yeah. They're like, like oh, this like, shit's still going seen on? everything, like, blow up and just, like, Everything, like, rise and fall, and they're like, uh, okay, I'm just, okay. still here. Like, like, I feel bad because they're just sentient enough to where, like, like they're, like, understanding of situations. And oh, they're, they're not sentient as humans. They're just robots. No, but they're not sentient enough to leave. They That's made the, the choice not to leave. I, I, They're good boys. I, I, I mean, he wants to believe that C-3PO is such a good boy that he will not leave, like, well, any of the resistance. It's in his, like, culture. Or, like, not his culture, but, like, his, his coding. I guess, yes, it's in his programming, but also just the way he is. He's like, oh, I couldn't leave that. That's just improper. Whereas R2-D2 literally fucking turned off. So he didn't make <laughs> a choice to leave. He's like, oh, Luke left. Looks like I'm dead. <laughs> And he just turned himself off because he's like, fuck this, I'm done. Which oh, I get. Man. Like, R2-D2, he went through a lot. Mm. And, like, when Luke's like, bye, well, R2-D2 is like, just like done. Going, he's, like, he's right there doing, like, every war scenario. Yeah, just like, oh, man, R2. I want, <laughs> oh, man, R2. I feel bad for him. I mean, I feel bad for, like, so much of episode... I feel I, bad for Chewbacca. It, Chewbacca? Okay, yeah. He's the boy that's been there. Fucking Han Solo died. Now he's got Rey, which she's nice, but like you said, she is kind of annoying. Fucking dragging him around. And he sees Luke. Luke's like, yeah, fuck off. And he's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I guess I'm going to eat these stupid animals and then feel bad about that too. I guess I'm, I have nothing to do in this movie other than I, to I, yell and I be there. I will say, at least like... In, like, the original movies, like, when you get to, like, movie 5, even though Han Solo's, like, fucked up in, like, the Carbonite, like, you still have hope for things. But, like, I feel like in episode 8, there's, like, no real, like, everything's just super depressing, and, like, there's no real, like, I just don't really want to watch a ninth movie. I want to watch a ninth movie, even though I know it'll disappoint me at this point, mm-hmm. because this, the one thing this movie did do is... It left a lot where if here's hoping if they go into the movie in depth, like the deep points that I think <laughs> they've implied, this could be a really good, interesting ninth movie. They spent like twenty because five minutes in a casino. That part we gotta ignore. We gotta that's like the casino scene is like the Ewoks and the Jar Jars. Just, okay, they no, don't never compare those to the Ewoks, because the Ewoks were like a valuable part of the like like the the last movie. I guess that's true. And they were, like, legitimately, like, But a lot of people good. say that the Ewoks, like, shouldn't have been there. But I do like the Ewoks. Also, I grew up watching it as a kid. And so, it, like, it does have, like, that soft spot. Like, I like the Ewoks as a kid. I still like them. I, I like the Ewoks But because, the Gungans... Yeah. There's, the Gungans are just fucking awful. Leave them out. I'll say the casino scene's one of those things where, like, the movie tried something gimmicky. And it just shouldn't have been there. Um, so, hopefully they don't do that shit again. Uh... No well, going like, to do this. Okay, well, will get this. Because, like, both the Resistance and the First Order lost a lot in this film. And they're both, like, really small now. And I think it's, like, implying that, like, they're both, like, fucking, like, withering away. Like, and I think the implied thing that when they sent out their distress signal and no one answered is I'm pretty sure the rest of the universe is, like, moving on without them. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, like... I'd like to think that it's like planets are like having their own like local governments now. They're just oh, yeah. moving on, and it's like 
off in the distance are like this fucking alt right party and then like some like leftists. So they like keep fighting in the corner. They're like, who are these people? Yeah. And like they're ex- spending all this money and like fucking killing each other over nothing. And like the rest of the universe is like, oh, we're done with these guys. But then, yeah. Also, so that's really interesting to think about like how they're both like kind of at the end. And like there's not really a point for them to be fighting anymore, but they're like, oh, we gotta do it. And the obvious power struggle between Kylo and Hux. Because Hux is fucking pissed at this point. Like, in both of their eyes, they could be the supreme leader. Mm-hmm. And if they do it well, it'd be really nice to see that final... Even though Kylo could just, like, kill Hux like nothing because he's a, written as, like, a snivelly human boy. I still boy. really know why Kylo doesn't. I don't know. I'm like, sure he'll kill Hux by the next week. Like, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that is just, like... They're, like, rules that they never really mention, but, like, they kind of, like, just go by. So they'll have, like, random spouts of, like, weird storylines. But then, like, when it comes to, like, regular, like, things that they could explain, or just, like, things that, like, they could totally do but don't do, like... Well, how about just how Hux, was almost, that Hux was almost gonna kill Kylo right there? Yeah. And even though it probably make a lot of fans mad and, like, kind of mess up the movie's plotline... How interesting would it be if Hux did just kill Kylo right there? Like, that whole Mm. plot, like, that whole side of the universe, done. Like, Rey doesn't have to fight the dark side anymore because Hux is like, you motherfucker, and just shoots him. Yeah. And he's done. He's dead. And then, like, she doesn't have to worry about the Sith. And then Hux is like, now I guess I'm the Supreme Leader, and he has his military. And then it's like, okay. And then, like, Rey, as the Jedi, she's inevitably going to become. And the Resistance scrunch, like, what's left of the First Order that's, like, expending a lot of money and, like, some resources and troops which on, like, a, a pointless fight. I still feel like it's just, like, it's basically gonna be, like, oh, hey, they have, like, no real, like, presence in this galaxy anymore. And, like, also, yeah, like, literally no one cares what these two people, like, these two, like, groups of people are doing. Like, at all. Especially when you think about, like, this is, like, an interplanetary thing. So, like, if you really scaled it down, that'd be like if you're living here, like in Arizona, in America, on Earth, and it's like you're loosely part of the same government as like Mars and Jupiter, and then like somewhere on Jupiter and like Saturn, there's like two political groups that are fighting. Or honestly, here on Earth, it's just like there are like wars, like civil wars going on right now that have nothing to do with us. I was like, okay. To me, it's like if you, it's like. 1800s America where like there are people living in like the wild west and then you have like the Spanish American war or like like just like other shit where like or you even, have like your country fighting in like World War 1 or something like that and you're just like in like rural Iowa and you just like don't get affected by this shit. Yeah even that like even like yeah. when the American Civil War is going on there are like some cowboys in Arizona that have nothing to fucking do with thing. Yeah. They don't have anything to do with it. They're like, I'm just grab one. Like, I don't give a shit about slavery or, like, the union. Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm here just here in my saloon. Slurp. Like, yeah. that's the thing. That's, like, it's like that, but, like, galaxy level. I mean, there was, like, one or two Civil War battles in Arizona. But that's about it. It was some Confederates came to be like, yeah, we're going to set up camp in Arizona. And then Union soldiers from California are like, no, the fuck you aren't. And they fought out, like, a couple miles north of Tucson. Yeah. At, a uh, What's the... It's not the Chiricara Mountain. Or you could think of, like, Oregon Trail shit, where, like, they're just doing their own problems. They don't give a shit about, like, what the government's doing. Like, oh, they're yeah. just trying to survive. And, like, do their own shit and, like, not die of dysentery. Like, it's, like, macro versus micro shit. Like, like legitimately. Yeah. And it's, like... I guess the Civil War and, like, the cowboy analogy is good in terms of, like, the Star Wars thing... Because, like, the outcome of that civil war does eventually, like, affect you because it is for, like, who's ruling the country you live in and all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the time, at the end of the day, it's like you don't really have to care that much because your life still sucks and you're going to, like, be dead before it really culminates. Yeah, that's that Because, like, you're going to be, like, 80 and it's like, I'm dead. I don't fucking care anymore. Or not even that. Like, back then you'd be like, yeah, I guess I'm 50 and I'm done. Mm-hmm. So, like, these aliens, they got... Uh, and at this point, like, the government's so unstable. Like, I'd imagine that, like, certain planets, like, don't care about the politics because they're not, like, contributing to how, the political system. How old is Luke Skywalker supposed to be in uh, Last Hope? Or New Hope? 
Probably the same as like Mark Hamill's like in his 60s. Mark, Luke Skywalker's supposed to be... No, in like or episode 4. The original Star Wars. How old is oh, Luke? Oh, in his 20s probably. Is he like 18 or 20? I think he's like 20. But that's the thing to think about too. Is like the Galactic Empire lasted for like maybe 20 years. Which I guess is a pretty good run. But at the same time it's like... This galaxy is so galaxy? fucking unstable. Because mm-hmm. it's the, like, I don't, oh, the Republic's over, it's the Empire, and then like, instantly just like, I guess we're in like a 20 year long civil war, and then it's over, and then like a couple years go by, and like, I guess we're in a different civil war? At that point, yeah, like again, like characters are not going to care anymore. Like, side characters in the Star Wars universe should not care about the, the Resistance and the First Order anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, the First Order is very bad, and the Resistance have good hearts. Like, they're in it for a good reason, I guess, of dying to fight these people, because the people, I guess, if left... If left alone, the First Order would become, like, a serious threat to the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Considering they did blow up, like, an entire fucking star system and, like, ended the interplanetary like they did like end the republic again yeah but if you don't live on those planets if you're like out on the outer rim in like some fucking country like like a planet like Jakku like a like nowhere yeah. planet like that you don't give a fuck no you're some fucking junk trader that's why I've always liked characters that are like like the smuggler like Han Solo before <laughs> he joined the Civil War cause that character doesn't like or like a Benito Del Toro Benicio Del Toro yeah He's just a... His character. Like, yeah. he's just there for profit because he knows good guys, well, bad guys. I'm thinking about the thing where it's, like, basically, the only way for you to, like, actually do something in this entire galaxy is to just be a part of, like, the bullshit, like, like Galactic Empire thing or, like, like, the First Order or whatever. Because, like, think about, like, a normal person that was born on, like, a, like some random planet that, like, wants to be in politics or some shit like that. Yeah, but, I want to be an ambassador for... Yeah, like anything. Like, okay, you move to an entire fucking different planet. Not, not only that, but like, like, think of like the odds of one person on one entire planet working, like, to be like to have like a large impact and like a galaxy-wide corporation. Like, it sounds like 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 you have. It's. I feel like it's the same thing as like a British Empire, where you have to be like born into like power or like wealth or to actually just do anything. Be lucky enough to be like exceptionally good. I guess, yeah. Like, just be lucky yeah. to be like, I'm so fucking good. But if you're, like, mediocre, then you're done. Just find a different yeah. life path. The main thing is, like, I, I don't feel like, and especially because it was only, like, what, 20, a 20-year-long 20 thing, do you think that, like, they have enough time to go around, the, like, the entire galaxy and find, like, the best leaders? Like, that's the thing, because I feel like there's yeah, just, like, like... It, that's it's too big. Like, you need to focus mm-hmm. on local stuff. So, like, that's the like, thing. Like, have, like... A trade federation. <laughs> like, it's hard enough for, like, one planet to do shit for itself. Like, yeah, I have, like, intergalactic trade, but, like, a, yeah. as power-hungry and, like, power-pleasing as it would be to be like, yeah, I'm the emperor of a bunch of planets. It's, like, it's hard to do. Like, I don't want to deal with that shit. Yeah. I'd rather be, like, the mayor of one town on one planet. Well, just think about, like, like well, I don't want to be mayor at U.S. All. politics right. for 20 years compared to, like, like and that amount of time... Like, this entire organization has, like, tried to rule over an entire galaxy. Yeah, no. Like, basically, 20 years ago, uh, what was that? Like, Bill Clinton is, like, halfway through his second term. (laughs) So, like, from, like, the middle of, like, Bill Clinton's second term to now is, like, the equivalent of, like, basically, like, the Galactic Empire. Yeah, my biggest issue with Star Wars... Which is related to, like, this thing of, like, how hard it would be to actually, like, rule a bunch of planets. Is, like, the limitations of sci-fi in that, like, a planet is, like, one biome and, like, one country, essentially. Because it's, like, Tatooine. The entire planet's a desert. And, like, there's some different like, cities. Like, Hoth is just Antarctica. Hoth is an ice planet. Like, it's so limited. And it's, like, there's gotta be planets where there's, like... Every possible biome is one planet, and there's, like, 200 countries on one planet. And, like, what if, like, 50 of those countries are, like, we don't want to be part of, like, the Galactic Senate? Mm-hmm. It's, like, that shit's got to exist. And it's, like, 
I know that's hard well, because like that's so much detail to try to put to into a sci-fi fair, movie. That's why so I you don't, have to simplify it. But like, that's why I don't like like large scale sci-fi movies, and I'm more for like TV show shit. Or like yeah, like video games or like extended universe shit. Like I get why it is so simplified because it's hard to fucking do. But it's like one of my biggest issues. It's like how could one planet like I get like I'm sure there are yeah, some going the entire planet that, one biome. But that also makes me like I'm so mad that like they just destroyed every like alternate like 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 extended universe stuff. Yeah, it's like that's that's a, that that is the most like power hungry like the, uh, what we're doing is is the real stuff and all you guys that made things are just fake. All you guys had a career for like forty years writing weird Star Wars books. You're done. Like that to me that is no like books, the please. dumbest power hungry. And I get it is because like Disney's kind of a shit corporation on like letting like large amounts of things happen. Like, I mean Disney is Disney basically is not, a monopoly. Oh, it is. You it's know? a superpower, but like. Unfortunately, it's a superpower that does what it does well, and so we all enjoy it, and we're okay with it. And well, I love Disneyland, it's, it's I love Star Wars. To I'm, have... I'm getting tired of Marvel, but then they do things like Black Panther, and it's like, okay, I'm interested again. It's one thing to have Marvel in Disney because, like, it's not crazy, like, it's not, like, galaxy-wide shit, you know? Like, it's still, like, pretty controlled. I mean, it's multiple universes. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. yeah. But, uh, it uh, is almost galaxy-wide, because now you have Guardians of the Galaxy. At the same time, it's I like... I you're saying. Well, that and just, like, they just make more movies. Like, like, like they don't make that many Star Wars movies that are just, like, purely, like, adding to stories. Like, it's like if well, here's Star Wars had, like, separate Rey and, like, Finn movies, instead of just... Ha- like, it's like Avengers yeah, are the yeah, equivalent yeah. to Star Wars movies. Basically. Well, that's what they're going to be going the route of. I mean, they're just doing prequel type stuff because they're doing the Han Solo movie. Well, they're doing Han Solo. They're going to do episode nine. And then after that, they'll probably do one more Star Wars story. I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually do a Boba Fett movie because that would make so much money. Um, I mean, yeah, but like, that just sounds like if they made Boba Fett interesting and they did the movie well, it would be so cool. Because Boba Fett is one of those characters where he looks so fucking cool. It's something about him that you assume he's so cool. But in the movie, he doesn't do shit. Well, I guess it gets Han Solo. But, like... Well, it's Boba the, Fett's one of those things where, like, his character in screen time is, like, not... Doesn't do that much stuff. But there's so much extended universe stuff about him that they could explore. Really? Well, yeah, Boba Fett, he's, like, one of the best bounty hunters in the universe. Well, well that's fucking it. cool. But, but the thing and is, he comes like, from the Mandalorians, and the whole Mandalorian thing is so cool. Is that, is that, like, what they tried to talk about in Attack of the Clones? No, Midichlorians are bullshit. Mandalorian is, like, a fucking planet of, like, like, they're, like, uh, uh, if someone actually listened to our podcast, and, like, those Star Wars are gonna get mad, because I don't officially know, but... They're like a like a whole order of like hunters, and I don't I don't know if they're all bounty hunters, but like it's a way of life, and like the armor that Boba Fett wears is Mandalorian armor. And it's like there's a lot. That's why you see uh, like Comic Con so many different looking like Bobas, because it's like different Mandalorian armor. Because you could be a man like it's a type of soldier. It's like one planet where it's this like faction, or it's like we're gonna be the best hunters, we're the best soldiers, and so it's like just. Highly skilled. And then Boba Fett, like, got raised there. So it's, like, a literally just Predator planet? Kinda. It'd be like, uh... Like, you know Spartans in Greece? Yeah. Oh, they're just, like, just, like, a bunch of warriors that are, like, on yeah. one big planet? It's, like, just one big order of, like, soldiers and, like, hunters and fighters. Like, we're the best. And, like, they have, like, Mandalorian armor. That sounds fucking terrifying. They're cool. Like, Mandalorians are cool. There's, like, a lot of lore to them. But, again, since the extended universe doesn't exist anymore. But... Which, like, but Rian Johnson, one of the directors from Star Wars, already got signed three movies. So after Episode Nine is over, he's signed. There's going to be a new trilogy that will take place in the Star Wars universe and have completely new characters that have nothing to do. I don't want with the characters another the fucking universe. trilogy. I don't want. Like, I I don't like that. I don't want it. Like, I, I do want it, but I don't like. At that point, I'm going to be like, what, like thirty something. Yeah, I guess. That's the only thing with this Avengers movies is like they've been taking so long 
that now that like Infinity, like Civil War came out, and that was a disappointment to me because it wasn't really like the comics. And then now Infinity War is here, and like so much, and, like all this stuff. Like every time I see a trailer, my like one thought is like, I wish this came out when I was like 17 or 18. Yeah. Because yeah. like now I'm 26, and like I've been having to watch so many Marvel movies uh-huh. that like I'm getting like desensitized and like too old for it now almost. And it's like I'm getting like tired of it, and like I feel bad because it's like. Like, I wish I had a time machine so I could, like, bring my younger self and be like, look at all these cool movies that are out now. I'm like, oh, shit. Because, like, 18-year-old me would be fucking hyped. But, like, 26-year-old me is, like, I've had to watch so many Marvel movies now. It's like, could have taken that instead. <laughs> no, it's like, I don't know. And it sucks. But that's how it is. Well, like, it, it's, like, logically it makes sense that they can't just well, make them all the, at once. The film, the film industry itself is, like, collapsing on itself because... Where are we going? I'm lost. I don't are we going east we're or west? Val Vista and Ray. So you can just turn around. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's... I think we've been driving the same fucking east, south, west, north, east, south. I think I've been driving the same block like three times now. Yeah, because I keep, been turning I keep right hitting, and turning right and turning right. I keep right. turning right and I hit Val Vista. I'm like, where am I? Oh, my God. Okay. But what I was going to say is I feel like we're kind of like at like... There are, like, two types of movies now, basically. You just have, like, movies for people that don't like movies. <laughs> and then you have, like, A24, like, indie, like, introspective shit now. Yeah. So, basically, it's, like, the realm, like, era now is, like, art movies are now, like, being played in, like, Harkins and shit. And then you have movies for people that just want to leave the house. Yep. So, you have, like, like, which, I mean, to be fair, you have shit like Paddington and Jumanji, too. Which I guess was good. People say it's good. Um, but like, yeah. Jumanji 2 was not bad, but don't you dare compare it to Paddington. Paddington is a masterpiece. No, but I'm saying movies for people that, like, do not expect, like, like do, not, do not have a lot of, like, high, like, their, their standards are not, they're like, They're crowd pleasers you know, yeah. or they're Oscar bait or they're actual art. Basically. The big Which, blockbuster crowd pleasers, there's the family comedies. There's the slightly less comedy, but still, like, crowd pleaser comedies. I would even say The Disaster Artist is almost that, but that's just because it's still attached to, like, Seth Rogen and James Franco, so you have that expectation of, like, the I college say, comedy. Disaster Artist genre. is, like, the most, like, non-artsy arts movie. Well, it's because it's still technically, like, a Seth Rogen, James Franco comedy movie. Yeah. Just about... Uh, they're just done really well and it is like a very arts like it's the best movie they've ever made yet yeah for sure but sometimes those like dumber college comedy films I actually like well, but it's cause they hit me at the right time and the right time to me I feel like that age of those movies are gone like the first 21 Jump Street when that came out that it, shit was awesome like I love that was movie. still pretty good 22 was not bad that lived up to it yeah yeah, but like and then like uh, movies like that. That I don't, era, I feel like, is gone now. Like yeah, some like, movies like, are trying to do that, but like, like it people was, have moved on from like, that. Like super bad comedy type of like like those type of like really good like sort of under like 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 low like low like kind of like under the radar type of like fun but still like bro movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to be really cool, like those and like Napoleon Dynamite type stuff. I guess like the teen comedy. The teen comedy isn't really like a thing anymore. Because yeah. now you have, like, John Cena trying to be, like, a dad that busts his kids trying to have sex. The new demographic people are focused on, rather than the teen comedy, is, like, yeah, like, this, like... Like, let's make these millennials comedy, like our texting movie. Well, no, it's not that millennials, like, our people our age are not the demographic for this movie anymore. It's movies for people, like, in their 30s and 40s that, like, think they're hip or funny. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, like, it's like, there's this new genre of trying to be, yep. like, a comedy for, like, the 30-year-olds that are, like... It's the same thing as, like, the new Arcade like the Fire norm, album. The, like, normie 30-year-olds that are, like, <laughs> I'll laugh at a joke. So, I, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, there's this demographic I'm, like, seeing right now that it's, like, the focus of a lot of these comedy movies are, like, lowbrow, like, the kind of people that would laugh at, like, Tosh.0 still... Uh, or like, like the people that like Lonely Island. Hey, sometimes Lonely Island was good, but again, like when I was like seventeen. I mean, like, like now, like no Lonely Island. 
Hey, As Lonely in, like, Island now contributed to Big Brigsby Bear. Okay. Like, Lonely Island themselves now are making shit like Brigsby Bear. No. Like, they've evolved. I mean, they're okay. funding, like, better art films because they've discovered Kyle Mooney, who is a genius. But to be fair, like, until that point, they made, like, that SNL, one out of- SNL, like, today's SNL humor is that same, like, this, like, let's be cops. Oh, like, we're funny, right? You know? Yeah, let's, we're funny. Let's be cops. Uh, the house. Like, pop star. Shit like that. Dad comedies. Dad. Oh, like, daddy's home and shit. Dad comedies that are, yeah. like, kind of bro culture. But... Well, it's it's the Not people that were anymore. raised with like like the, the stepbrothers people, type of shit, and then just like never yeah, left that. Yeah, it's the people who grew up with like yeah, like stepbrothers, Twenty One Jump Street, stuff like that, and then now they're older, and it's like their demographic still. It's the same people, but now they're older, so the movies are like have to have that like little bit older jokes too. For the people that are still funding Mark Wahlberg's career. <laughs> The evolution like, of, like, like Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg is subculture. legitimately just like not an actor. Like it's just Mark Wahlberg. Hey, what the fuck are you talking about, you chat ahead? No, did you hear the thing where he was saying like he regrets Boogie Nights because he like he hopes that God will forgive him for being in a porno movie? What the fuck? He literally was like like I hope God for, can forgive me for being in Boogie Nights because that was a bad decision on my part for my career because I don't want to be a uh, I don't want to be bad to God. Oh, I like he's like, like he's he's kind of gross. I thought he was just like a low bro Boston boy. Oh no, no! I I guarantee you he probably like was like like a Trump boy. Oh no, that is surprising. I don't, well at the same time like I just I he like I get him mixed up with Matt Damon. Oh well, even then like Matt Damon's apparently like a bad boy now too. Matt Damon's been a bad boy. I mean like a like the sexual harassment bad boy. So like Marky Mark, Marky Mark, like was like a racist, right? Didn't he like beat up an Asian dude? Back when Marky he was. Marky Mark used to be a drug dealer. I'm pretty sure there's like allegations that like Mark Wahlberg, I mean, when he, back when he was Marky Mark, like beat the fuck I out of like be an surprised. Asian guy because what? he was Asian. But I might be making that up. I don't know because there's no, like, so many he, like things before he was Marky now. Mark, he was literally a drug dealer. That doesn't matter. So like, I would boy. be surprised if Marky Mark was like fucked up. He's like a Jason Mendoza, but a little bit smarter. Mm-hmm. I guess Marky Mark was like a Jason Mendoza. Mark Wahlberg now is like funny dad. Funny dad with the money. money Mark dad. Wahlberg now is like he's like your racist uncle. This That's funny. A little bit. I like, guess. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Mark Wahlberg is like Mark Wahlberg's Mark Wahlberg. I still see him as like Boston boy, so it's like the lesser intelligent comedy. Like he's like the not that everybody from Boston he's is like dummies, a but douchier version of like I like Boston uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like Ben Affleck's douchey cousin. Matt Damon was in the Ben Affleck movies, right? Not Mark Wahlberg. What? Which kid? Oh, uh, Matt Damon was. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Matt Damon and Ben, ben Affleck go back. Like they're yeah, because they like boys. wrote movies together and shit. They're boys. Yeah. I like Ben Affleck. I like Ben I don't Affleck. like a lot of movies he's done, but I like him, and I like his Batman more than any I other I feel Batman. bad for how much, like, Matt, Matt, like, Ben Affleck probably just, like, really just wants to make good movies. Yeah. Like, but, like, he's legitimately just been, like, fucked up by, like, the movie industry and, like, a bunch of other things. Well, he started out with a movie, like, indie movies, like, Good Will Hunting. Mm-hmm. It's weird to think that, like, Good Will Hunting, when it came out, was, like, an indie movie. It is weird to think. Like, it, it boosted the indie industry because these boys are like, we'll make a movie. Um, so, I don't know. Like, it's weird to think about, like, basically, like, late 90s and, like, early 2000s movies. Like, I don't know what's independent and what wasn't. You know? Well, you got, like, Slackers was pretty good. What's Slackers? It's, uh, what's the name of that guy? The guy that directed the Stupid Boyhood movie. Uh, I know you're talking about the guy that recently made Boyhood. Slackers was one of his first movies, and it was like a really interesting experimental indie movie. And I was like, damn, that's good for a good. And then Boyhood, when the trailer came out, I was fucking hyped, and then it was such a boring disappointment of a movie. Isn't it like almost three hours long? Oh yeah, 
I mean, the so movie took Richard 12... Linklater. Richard Linklater, yeah. Slackers, like his weird 90s movie. That was a pretty good movie. And I'm sure he's had oh, some other good ones. He's also the guy that did like like the before midnight, after midnight, whatever, like like the like the like like the same kind of like thing as Boyhood where it's like like they took like six years or something like that in between movies. But this one's like way better apparently. The before sunrise, before uh I like midnight, Ethan Hawk. before sunset. I like Ethan Hawk. Ethan Hawk is an underrated actor because he does like a lot of dumb stuff, but then like every now and then he gets in an indie movie and it's like, damn, this is a real actor right here. Like Ethan Hawk and like Madi, I really liked. And like every now and then I'll see an Ethan Hawk role and I was like, you know what? I just like this actor. Like I hope he does better. I mean, he deserves more. But like he is in a lot of like bo- like I low think the brown main thing movies. With him is that like. I think he just likes the process of acting too much to, like, care about what movie he's in. That's the thing. Like, he, he's just interested. He'll just take... Because, like, I feel like he's, like, on, like, the lower tier of, like, celebrities. And so he's still kind of in that, like, I'll take any movie. But it's like, but you deserve to, to be picky, Ethan Hawk. You deserve to be better. Because you can do gems like fucking Madi. I still never saw that movie. You just... I'll, I'll tour it. Uh, I mean, I'll find it somewhere, <laughs> oh. and we'll watch it. Yep, find that. All right. Oh fuck. All this. right. This is the, uh, probably the end of the podcast. I parked at my house finally after driving around for fucking ever. This is about the size, the size, the <laughs> length of like some people's normal podcast. So I'd say that's good. And also the length of uh, Paddington. Oh. <laughs> no. So uh, Paddington would have been longer. It's, it was like an hour and a half. It's only been an hour. 26 minutes? Yeah. I mean, if we wait four more minutes, it's going to be an hour and a half. Well, then we might as well. I guess. I don't know. I'm glad that Margot Robbie, like, didn't become another fucking, like, Megan Fox. Like, she actually, like, decided... These are good actors. <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm excited for I, Tanya. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it either. And it's out I mean, now. I, I love the lady that's her mom because of uh, West Wing, but like... Oh, I can tell she's going to be good in that I movie. can... Like, like, well, I, mean, I know it's like her character's going to be bad in the movie, but I mean like she's I'm a good I'm anticipating getting actress. like kind of like depressed with this movie. Oh, totally. Because it's going to be about like like basically like rural, like middle class to middle class America. Like every time I think about like anything financial, I get super depressed. <laughs> and so it's like, oh shit, this is gonna make me like really not feel good. Well, it's 11:54 p.m. Uh, I have to pee. I have to wake up in eight hours. Yeah, me too. Shit. I got school tomorrow. I'm hyped. I got school. Oh, tomorrow. a little bit. I'm more hyped that I don't work until Sunday. So that means I have Friday, Saturday. Have- oh fuck. Oh no, I got lab tonight. Today. Tonight is D&D. I'm DMing D&D. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I, I had so many plot lines planned. And so now that the my people in my D&D party chose the path they chose, now I can like flesh that path out more versus the other ones that I planned. This is going to be a good time. There's that. That is a good way I'm just gonna leave it in here for now. This is a good album. Is this still the same album? Yeah, this, this is like the third time it's been playing. Oh, it started over? Like twice. Oh, those are, there's a lot of songs on this album. It's been no, it's just two long songs. That's it? The whole album is two songs? It's one. In the, when, when records were a thing, it was just side one, side two. But you, couldn't you put like more than one song on a side? Yeah, but they just had like the length of the record. That's one song. Oop. Oh, like in terms of this yeah. album. Because he used like the entire side yep, as one so song. So 43 minutes and yeah. one song is 18 minutes and the other song's like, I don't know. 17 minutes. I guess. The other one's 25 minutes. Oh, well, I like those. It's weird. But I'm just kind of like going 
through the Still album. sounds like it could be <laughs> it the album. Still sounds like the album. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm, we're, we're done. Just kidding. Let's make it exact. Exactly. Well, uh, maybe a little over 30 minutes, just so we can say it's one hour 30 minutes. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. If you did, bye. How?